Uh, over here in the middle of the audience, you'll see there's a, a man running the sound system. He particularly requested the next piece of theater for you. This is theater. Now there's been dance, now there's theater. So we'd like you to uh, practice a little bit of yoga because it attracts more attention. You see a lot of people with their back turned to the audience. So we're going to do a quick yoga practice. You put your hands, unless you're eating, which is difficult to do this particular yoga with a spoon in your hand. Put your hands about this far apart. Everybody put your hands about this far apart. Can you do that? Your hands about this far apart. Of course, he's on his phone. Maybe he should be having a hard time. He's probably Buddhist. Can you put your hands about this far apart? And you put your phone in one hand. And you're moving to your other hand. And if you do that, then more people will be attracted to the audience. All right, so this is a pantomime about the awkward condition everyone finds themselves in. But it, it's generic. And since it's a pantomime, there's a, a long soundtrack explaining what's going to happen. So I'd like you to be very patient and in your mind or with your lips, as you like, chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Okay, this piece is dedicated to that big yellow truck over there. And the title of the piece is The Heavy Heavy Load. And our sound man today is Jagannath Puri Dham Das Puru. So let's give him a round of applause because he's been sitting at the sound system. He's going to continue. It's all around you, Puru. That's around. Okay, now we're going to start. Having received numerous warnings that an unwanted visitor would soon pay a call, the time came for this character to gather together all the accumulated worldly possessions of life and move. Yes. Every object, large, small, and in between, was oh so carefully wrapped into one huge bundle and then firmly tied and retied with three strong ropes. As you may have assumed, this particular piece of luggage was tremendously large and cumbersome and of practically immeasurable weight. It was somehow or other hoisted up onto the tired old back of this sorry individual. Thus, with the intention of trying to escape the inevitable, the journey began. Certainly, it would be quite a difficult task to even imagine just exactly how great the burden was and just how distant the destination lay. Yet driven by a frantic sense of urgency, the carrier continued, being always pressed by the heavy, heavy load. down into the depths of countless unknown caverns where ferocious beasts hid in wait of prey. Up, up to the heights of the steep slopes and along precarious narrow cliffs the twisting pathways led. Indeed, there was danger at every step. Nevertheless, on and on trod the feet of the trepidatious traveler, who constantly hesitated, being lost in a maze of anxiety. Not for a fraction of a moment was there freedom from the continued suffering caused by the weight of the heavy, heavy 
while crossing the wide waterless plain, the scorching heat of the sun's searing rays baked the surface of the ever dusty, thorn ridden terrain. At other times, the pathway opened onto an expansive quagmire where wicked winds whipped and blasted, sending frigid chills which cut to the very bone. Still, struggling on, all alone, the ever-troubled traveler trudged with seemingly no hope of reaching a goal. Gravely disturbed with each and every step due to the unyielding law of gravity acting on the heavy, heavy load. Then, precisely at the time when the point of no return was reached, there, where undoubtedly no one else was present at all, at all, the great, big, burdensome bundle that had been brought so far, ever so gradually began to slip from its place. Although all efforts were exerted to hold on to the weight by affording all possible stresses and strains to try to avoid impending loss. Yet, with each move that was made to rebalance, the imbalance increased until, finally, onto the unfeeling ground it did fall. The heavy, heavy Such a condition could not be believed. Having traveled so far, and having pushed on through hardships aplenty, but there it lay upon the earth. How could it be raised? How can it be budged? Oh, how could such a turn of events have taken place? So, near exhaustion from repeated Failing and trying to lift and relift, the soul began to reflect. Oh, what to do? Who can possibly help? For there is no one around to assist. So in utter despair, at the awful mishap, the sorrowful soul, pitifully weeping, sobbing with woe and ceaselessly moaning also flopped down. Oh, how so sorry the situation was. And, after a spell of hopelessness and such severe depression, one thought came clearly somehow to mind. There was no one to turn to. No one to call, no one would hear, no one but God himself. And so, born out of an uncontrollable bit of distress, came the call. Oh, God! God, please help me! Help me, please, dear God! Again and again in the vast desolation, the call to God migrated. With tears of forlorn, the wretched soul whined, Oh God, oh God, please I beg you, God, help me! Yes. The crying stopped out of astonishment. The poor soul searched all about to find the source of the yes that was heard. It must have been imagined. So the crying recommenced. Oh God, please, God! Yes? Who is that? Who 
is there? The solitary soul meekly inquired. You called me. What do you want? I will fulfill your desire. Simply tell me. What do you wish? God! Oh, God, is it you? Yes! Yes! My dear God! So, in the presence of the supremely powerful person, God, the weary soul who had suffered to such an extreme extent began to consider the circumstances very carefully. Appreciating the truly extraordinary good fortune of being offered the assistance of the all-glorious God himself, the soul submit the following request. Would you kindly return to its place on my back, this heavy, heavy load? Thus ends our story. This is to illustrate the foolishness of the conditioned soul who calls out to God when faced with the loss of all material possessions. Ultimately, the time of death, God, Krishna, is able to award any benediction. Krishna effortlessly and mercifully turns his transcendental attention to the sincere prayers of any soul wandering aimlessly through countless higher and lower births. Souls attached to the bodily conception of life suffer under the weight of their dear material desires, their heavy, heavy load, which are tied tightly by the three modes of material nature, the three strong ropes. Yet, when such miserly souls are given the golden opportunity of having freedom from all suffering, they ask God to let them again take up the immeasurable burden of their material attachments. Therefore, they must be reborn. Anyone can understand the awkward predicament one faces by taking birth in this material world. By calling out to the Supreme Personality of God Sri Krishna, the giver of liberation, by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can connect with Krishna through devotional service, Bhakti Yoga. The eternal spirit soul and the supreme soul, Lord Krishna, are linked together, and the individual soul becomes free from all misgivings and therefore becomes blissful, even in this life. The process is very easily performed. One need only begin by chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh Lord Krishna, please engage me in your loving devotional service. <laughs>